We're in early March taking a look at the 2017 NTEP Kentucky Bluegrass Trial. Now even though it's entitled the 2017 NTEP Kentucky Bluegrass Trial, it wasn't planted until spring of 2018, so we're two years of maturity now in this trial. In early March, there's a lot of things to see in this trial. Quite notably, the tremendous differences in earliness of spring greenup. Some of that is genetic and some of it is due to leaf spot disease, which delays the greenup of some of the varieties. For instance, the variety that I'm standing on right here. A lot of brown leaves are very visible. This can be improved through a light scalping of the grass and, and taking off some of the dead tissue that without going too low of a height to cut. That'll give a no, much nicer appearance. But there are tremendous differences in green up between some varieties here, this one being delayed, and then also the one that's in the foreground. Also some of the other things that we'd like to point out is choice in terms of reseeding damaged areas of turf grasses. This goes for not only Kentucky bluegrasses but also perennial ryegrasses and uh, tall fescues. The best time to overseed for damage that was caused in the summer of the year is in the fall of the year. That's the fir first choice. The second best choice is to do it in the spring, but if you wait until the spring there's a tremendous compromise in some cases. What we see here in this Kentucky bluegrass trial is injury from summer patch disease. That's a very serious disease that, that kills the crowns and therefore you get a great opening in the stand and it allows summer annual weeds like crabgrass and goosegrass to come in and then those are killed by the frosts in the fall leaving you with an ugly tan cover in this open area. Now by not overseeding in the fall and if we try to do it in the spring we've got a challenge ahead of us. First of all as everyone should know, when we cast out seed of a desirable variety, the pre-emergent herbicide doesn't know that it's not supposed to control the germination of the desirable turf grass as opposed to controlling the germination of the weed. So there's a compromise there. If we seed now in the spring to thicken up these areas of bluegrass that was killed out, we won't be able to use a pre-emergent herbicide because that, that would inhibit the germination of the Kentucky bluegrass. So we might fill that in with reseeding, but we're going to face some seed germination of goosegrass and perhaps yellow foxtail and crabgrass as well. Now if we choose to put the pre-emergent down, then we don't overseed, we don't face the weed, but we face an open bare area of soil. So that's the problem with choosing a pre uh, emergent versus a spring seeding. You have to choose one or the other and that's why fall overseeding of cool season perennial grasses is the best time to seed. We're now at two years of maturity on this National Turf Grass Evaluation Program Toll Fescue Trial. And this variety here is not one of the best in that it was attacked by large brown patch fungal disease last year. And you can actually even see some annual bluegrass, a winter annual cool season grass that came into the area that was opened up from the disease. Now the tall fescue that was in there and that was hit by the disease has long since rotted away after it died. But it's left these ugly openings. And we talk about tall fescue being a bunch type grass. It doesn't have the ability to knit in like Bermuda grass when it is injured. So we'd have to cast seed over the area and get it to germinate to fill in these types of damaged areas. Much like the situation with Kentucky bluegrass as a cool season perennial, you have to make the choice of seeding in the fall or the spring. And fall again is the first best choice for reseeding a damaged area like this. And that's because we find ourselves in the spring, if we choose to seed now, we can't use a pre-emergent herbicide. If we use the pre-emergent herbicide and we don't uh, overseed or interseed, then we've got this ugly open area that we may have to tolerate for the next eight months till we get the best option for seeding again. So again, it's a chance to, to look at why we do fall interseeding rather than spring. The other thing that I like to always mention when we talk about cool season perennial grasses is the reason that we suggest mixing tall fescues with Kentucky bluegrasses. That sometimes helps in cross resistance to the diseases. Tall fescues have good resistance to summer patch disease 
but they're weak in terms of their resistance to large brown patch fungal disease. And on the flip side, Kentucky bluegrasses are much more resistant to brown patch fungal disease, but susceptible to summer patch. So that's why we mix them. And in order to get a one-to-one -one approximate seed count, we'll frequently use 95% by weight tall fescue and about 5% by weight Kentucky bluegrass. And that's because there's about a tenfold difference in the size of the seed. Uh, and then that would yield on a seed count basis a one-to-one -one ratio if by weight you have 95% tall fescue and 5% Kentucky bluegrasses. So think about these very important factors when you go to reestablish your cool season perennial fawn. Hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.